All right, so YCS Niagara Falls just concluded, and even though there was no stream, you have me for all your tournament reward needs. Let's talk about what happened, and most importantly, how Rage of the Abyss impacted this event, since it was the first YCS with Rota being legal. Centurion was doing insanely well, Sky Striker even pulled an upset, there's much and more to talk about, so we better go ahead and get started. Of course, like the video if you enjoy it, and share all of your thoughts in the comments down below. Two quick disclaimers before we do start. First, Sleep Chief is dropping a beautiful limited drop tonight, so make sure to hop on their website if you're looking for a very pretty deck box. And secondly, I might still look a little disheveled because I'm still recovering from a horrible cold which I had. It was not pleasant, so if I sound a bit weird, that's why. But let's go ahead and get started. For this event, I would say it was a pleasure watching it, but I can't, as there was no stream. Look, I don't even want to get into it too much. We all know how most of the community feels about this. We know that there are reasons behind the scenes that we are not privy to, and why there are no streams, but it is incredibly unfortunate for the first big event with a huge and impactful set being legal, not being streamed. It's kind of a bummer. Not to mention that the Konami TCG event coverage blog is just so janky, and I always say that. The website keeps crashing. It's it's really not enjoyable to just read and look at some of the charts. And yes, they do post very frequently when they don't have a stream, but still, having a stream would be much, much better. So with that out of the way, please share all of your thoughts about that in the comments as well. But let's talk about the Rage of the Abyss impacting this event. So first, I want to take a look at some of the pie charts. Of course, <laughs> let's talk about top 32 breakdown as well as top 16 with pairings and decks and all of that. And yes, <laughs> Asamina did impact this event and it is going to have a major, major influence on the entire format moving forward. Azamina cards are completely insane and they really push those snake eye strategies and fire king as well with Ulkanix, a new card from Age of the Abyss, over the edge. Because being protected from hand traps pretty much for free is nice, right? <laughs> and obviously we see this in the top 32 cut breakdown, but we have to talk about the fact that overall the Azamina engine also impacted Rescue Ace. We see three of them in top 32, which is definitely not bad for Rescue Ace, a deck that is historically known as bricking, just not being as great as some other fire family members of it, <laughs> since all of this kind of falls under the same category with Bonfire, Princess, Snake Eyes, all of that. Now, let's also talk about Yubao and Tempai Dragon. As you're going to see by top 8, Yubao and Tempai are going to significantly fall off, meaning only one of both made it to top 8. And Yubao was still represented at 5, as well as Tempai Dragon in top 32, but it just was not enough. Compared to the other events, this is crucial for Yubao, but we kind of expected this. It pretty much has its own protection in the form of Phantom, but it's not as great as Zamina Snake Eye being a completely broken deck and having the engine on top of it. With Yubao, you can beat a lot of hand traps, but the matchup with Snake Eyes is going to be kind of tough. You have to have all of your hand traps at your disposal, or if you try to build it a little differently with board breakers, you might go for that as well, but you have to deal with their end board. It's tough because Snake Eyes is that powerful. That's the main issue. And Yubel does not have space for 18 and or even more hand traps or non-engine, I should say. It can afford from 12 to 15 because your engine is extremely important and all of your other engines that you play as well. Now let's talk about Tempai Dragon and another card from Rage of the Abyss, which is of course Molcharmi Fuvaras. Now, if you read some of the feature matches, this card was extremely, extremely important. Tempai Dragon getting a couple additional draws with this, it's 
super nice for the deck. Of course, it has Genroku as well from the last set, which Tempai kind of desperately needed some more engine, so you don't just pass when your Pydra gets interrupted. And now with Genroku and also Mucharmi, it just has much more consistency and also power and also Dominus Impulse. There was a little article on the Konami blog which pretty much talked about the tech cards of choice and they wanted to focus on Fuvaros and Impulse. Both of them are going to be super impactful moving forward. Impulse can be used in the likes of Tempai Dragon and in many different decks as well because it locks you out of specific attributes which are honestly not that important for some strategies. You do have to keep in mind that it's going to lock you out of some hand traps like Valor, Nibiru, Droll due to their attributes, but you should be able to work around that. And I also believe that Impulse is a super important card for another deck I want to focus on, which is Sky Striker. Now, this is the upset I was talking about. Look, we have to keep in mind that Ryan Yu is an insane player, like just props to him for how well he is doing. He's a very important name in the competitive community and um, he's really showing off what Sky Striker is able to do with all of the board breakers. You have most of your spell cards and important board breakers that do the job for you and uh, there's also Impulse as well. This card is just gonna be so annoying <laughs> but it's also in my opinion a really cool design on a trap card slash pan trap kind of thing let's mention some other decks as well we have millennium exodia centurion bestial plants labyrinth virtual beast so virtual beast being another the d shifter deck obviously just like tempa dragon but also having a very solid engine makes sense that it's in top cut labyrinth as well just super nice if you know how to pilot it well because it doesn't get hurt by virtually anything in it can play the dominus cards which is great plants as well it's julia's <laughs> like that's all i have to say and millennium exodia which is kind of a little shocking but i'm here for it now let's focus on centurion centurion was piloted by Puck. And we also saw Cameron Neal play it in Swiss, although I'm pretty sure he was knocked out by Dominic Couch on, on the bubble, which props to Couch. And um, yes, well, Centurion. <laughs> this deck, I had the pleasure of testing against it quite a lot. Shout out to Nina. Um, it's super scary because of the support, which is just it's a generic synchro able to send search and emblema, which is a great extender, but just overall Centurion Bestio, it does not get hurt by the Charmy cards. And that is vital when I tell you how important that is. Like most of the decks are going to focus on citing those cards. And if you don't get hurt by it, it doesn't really matter. Also, you can play so much non-engine, not to mention that Bishtios are like super annoying to deal with if you're playing any kind of Fiend Smith variant. And the interruptions it puts up, like it might not seem as much. The usual end board is just going to be a couple hand traps. And of course, Crimson Dragon going into Blazer Dragon, which is giving me PTSD just by existing. But it's super hard to deal with because why does that card have 4k 4k and is able to negate virtually everything yes i don't <clears throat> yes crimson dragon is a problem <laughs> but also they have phalanx they have cards that access similar things for example primera as well as the new auxilla both search centurion cards so it's super hard to decide where you want to hand trap that deck because you can just easily get punished by them having an additional extender and pair that with someone being a very seasoned player like Pac, and it just makes sense that he made it as far as he did he unfortunately got knocked out of top 16 due to a brick which is a, a bummer all around but yes like centurion is just incredible also Something else I also want to point out is we were able to keep track with everybody and how they were doing, obviously by them posting their results on Twitter, but LAMPYGO was also super important in this, always keeping us up to date with how well the top players are doing, focusing on some of the most prominent names in the competitive community 
and just updating us with their results all the time, which is super cool. There's also Paolo. He made it all the way to top 16 as well, racking up those international tops like it's nothing. And um, since we have this picture on the screen, I also want to talk about something else. Konami actually is giving out interesting prizes. I know that's wild, but check this out. They have sleeves as well as dice and kind of a like a display frame thing for cards which is actually low-key kind of cool <laughs> like i actually like it and i think it's cool that they genuinely are trying at least it seems to me that way yeah we don't have a stream but we do have a new card display <laughs> so it's give and take with them all the time but i did want to give them props for this i think it's i think it's kind of cool in the end we all kind of knew what was going to happen. A Snake Eye, a Zamina variant ended up taking the win. And as much as that's super scary for this next format, as I keep saying, this deck is going to be a problem. I still believe, at least looking from the top cut, that decks should be able to make it work, even if they are not fire as Zamina variants. And decks like Ritual Beast, Labyrinth, Sky Striker, Centurion speaks for themselves. If you know how to build a deck to go into this insane field of fire and Azamina, you should be fine because the only trick there is is just have enough hand traps and board breakers to the point where you can pair them up with a strong one to two card combo so you have enough space for all of that. And you should take the win. So yes, if you enjoyed this little report, please make sure to give the video a like and also let me know what you think, what deck you're going to be playing, how are you preparing for this next format and how you feel about it in general. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.